in uh, to Wingate University's Virtual Homecoming 2020. We've reinvented some things for you. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to be with us on campus this year. So we've got some great content. I hope that everyone enjoys. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I've got Brian Johnson uh, with me. We're gonna get to him in just a second. My name is Spencer Percy. I'm the Director of Development here at Wingate University in class of 2010. Again, Brian Johnson, class of 1996. Uh, a very accomplished alum uh, and one that I, I'm looking forward to celebrating today. Momentarily, he's going to demonstrate his craft in mixology uh, and also make us uh, charcuterie and cheese board uh, and share some stories with us today. Brian, Absolutely. how's everything going? It's good. It's good, Spencer. Thanks for, uh, for inviting me to participate in this uh, Winget virtual homecoming this year. I know it's uh, been sort of a weird time for, for everything, but uh, Homecoming is always fun, especially at Wingate. Awesome. Well, like I said, we've had to reinvent some things this year, but looking forward to what we have. So, as I mentioned earlier, you're a mixologist, a very accomplished one, a celebrated one in Charlotte, I understand. How did you get into to mixology originally? Uh, so, the way I got into it, uh, you know, it, it, everything kind of funnels from Wingate University. Uh, so, there was a travel abroad program that allowed me to uh, go overseas and study in London with a, uh, a great group of people, Dr. Little, uh, now Dr. Little Sweat was in charge of that group and uh, we were there to study art, English, communications, all the, all the great stuff uh, that the program had to offer. Uh, there was Shakespeare, Romantic Victorian authors, uh, British religious history. We were uh, uh, at a theater almost every other night to see a live performance. A lot of it had to do with Shakespeare, which was also one of the things we were studying. So I was there uh, in London and with a whole group of people, we go to Piccadilly Circus, which is on the west side, and we're just exploring, exploring the city. And I saw TJ Friday, so I said, oh, you know, it's, it's back home, but I wanna see what they're doing here in, the, in, uh, in, in England. And so I walked into this bar and it was magical. You saw the bartenders behind uh, the bars just in, involved in their craft and they were spinning bottles and doing flair and lighting things on fire and it was, you know, for me being a college student, uh, this was my first experience with something mm -hmm. that, ele that elevated and I was just enamored with it. I'm like, this, I've got to, I've got to learn more about, about what, what's going on here. So, uh, fast forward through the semester, get back to um, Wingate and they had just uh, opened up a Applebee's in Monroe and they were looking for, for staff. So that's kind of where I started, but uh, was at TGI Fridays for a, uh, for a long time, for several years uh, here in Charlotte. And that's so awesome. that's kind of how, the, how I got into uh, uh, the mixology part. That's awesome. Wing Wingate. Uh, they they made a, a famous mixologist here in the area, maybe on accident, but they did it. Didn't I, they? I'm pretty sure it was on accident <laughs> for sure, but you know, it was just a really good experience. And then for me to be able to come back and, um, you know, the whole trip itself was inspiring and yeah. inspirational and just the ability to experience all these wonderful things uh, studying abroad that Winget allowed me to, to do, I'll, I'll never, uh, I'll, I'll never um, forget it for sure. But uh, just to be able to get back to the States, start working in the industry. Uh, Fridays was really a great springboard for my craft because it enabled me to learn the basics. And back in the 80s, 90s, there weren't a lot of, of flavored libations. There weren't, yeah. there weren't a lot of flavors of vodka or, or flavors to play with, so you had to get really, really super creative between juices and mixers mm -hmm. to um, make these drinks taste the way you needed them to make. Right. And with, with it being a corporate company, everything was ounces to the ounce, to the, to the type of ice cube, to the, uh, the type of straw that you would put with the drink. So that was really a good springboard for me to be able to um, jump into something like this. It's great. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. I want to hear more sure. about the place we're in and more about kind of your how you got here. But um, let's switch gears to homecoming. Yes. Um, so, do you have a favorite homecoming memory, or is there there's something that sticks out in your mind about when you get homecoming in the past? You know, uh, back when I was in school, 
back in my day, uh, <laughs> you know, we got homecoming was definitely different because we didn't have the brand new stadium that we had today. We didn't have all the the, the jumbotrons. Um, you know, it was really what I defined as as a community. That's what Wingate was and still is to this day. But you know, it was just it was just fun to be uh, in a crowd of people. And typically, um, I was one of the the guys that they looked to to do some of to, to use my sort of art degree in creating some of the the floats and you know some of the signage. Also, I had a truck, so you know if you're if you've got a truck in, in any sort of college setting, yeah. you're you're a, a go-to because good to go. you've got an <laughs> eight-foot bed that yeah. they can just fill with sofas and, yeah. and moving. But uh, you know it was great to be able to to participate in, in Wigan in that respect. And uh, you know one of my fondest memories was uh, when um, I became the Wigan Bulldog. So I was able to be the okay. mascot. That was a lot of fun to be down there with the players and uh, you know with, with the with the cheering staff and just to to experience homecoming on a different level, uh, right. you know, than just being a fan participating, uh, you know, in the stands. So it really uh, that was probably one of my my fondest homecoming uh, you know, memories. Right behind when they did the 20 year reunion. So now you fast forward tw like 20 years. <clears throat> Uh, you have this incredible stadium that's been built with, uh, it, it was just amazing to kind of see that transition that mm -hmm. we had and uh, to, to obviously reconnect with a lot of, of people that you, you lose touch with mm -hmm. throughout the year or, or years. And you know, some, some of uh, the people I went to school with are no longer around and uh, you know, so it was nice to, to uh, remember them, uh, especially at Wingate. And then, uh, with me being affiliated with Pi Kappa Phi and the yeah. chapter on campus, you have this whole younger contingency of, of people that have heard your name, mm -hmm. but not necessarily have met you, so it's great to interact with them and kind of see where they're at and what's happening with them on campus and how uh, Wingate has changed just with them being there for just a few years. So, right. uh, it's, it's it, Homecoming to me is always, always a lot of fun, and I try to, I try to make it to every single one. So I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad at this one. That's for sure. You're a no-brainer to get involved in this, this new uh, reimagined homecoming because you are there every year and you enjoy it as much as you just explained. So talk about your academic experience at Wingate a little bit. Sure. Um, what did you major in, and maybe who are some of the folks? Because we were talking about this beforehand, sure. so I want you to talk about this. Who are some of the folks that really impacted you from an academic standpoint? Well, when it comes to Wingate University, uh, back then it was Wingate College, yeah. and it wasn't even on my radar. Uh, I had gone to a community college where they had a, uh, a college fair, basically, where all the colleges from North Carolina had a booth, and you could go and talk to all the recruiters. So I went to every single stall and talked to every single recruiter, and I hit them all with the same question what makes your school so much more special than any other college or university that I could attend? Right. Why, why should I come to your school? And did that. Went back home, kind of knew kind of where I wanted to go. I knew the, the place that I didn't want to go. And within, I would say, maybe a matter of days, uh, I've got this letter from Wingate University. Every other school that replied to me, it was just a postcard and it was the very generic, well, you know, we'd love for you to come visit our, our campus, and that was about it. Mm -hmm. Carol Story wrote me a three-page letter <laughs> on handwritten college world paper. Yeah. I mean, she, she, she legitimately wrote a letter to me about all the wonderful things that Wingate had to offer and why I should come there. And shortly after that, I got a letter from Dr. Louise Napier, mm -hmm. who uh, I didn't know at the time, but she told me about the Wingate Art Program and how great it was, and she would love to have me as part of it. She gave me her, her home phone number, uh, told me about uh, you know, uh, her family and, and how Wingate was a family, and she would love for, you know, for me to come and, and visit the school. Uh, so I did, Scott Behe, Mm -hmm. was the guy who, who toured me around campus that day. Uh, got a chance to meet Jerry McGee. Mm -hmm. And 
I said, you know, I think I think Wingate's going to be be my choice. I didn't even look at any other of the other schools. It just was such. It, it felt right. It felt it felt like I was at home. So, um, and you know, I just uh, I just am so thankful that I chose Wingate because uh, the the faculty there, uh, especially as a freshman, they really reach out to you and make sure that you know you're welcome. And if you have questions or concerns, mm -hmm. this is this is how you can, you know. You can contact me. So when I got to school, when I got to campus and started uh, into my, uh, what turned out to be a five-year program, uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be four, turned out to five. I just wanted to learn more. I, I didn't want to leave Wingate yet. Uh, right. But yeah, I, I studied, I spent the majority of my time with, with Louise uh, in the art department. Um, I remember Doug Helms was my ceramics professor. He was just so talented. Uh, that's one of our professors that uh, Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, and he was just uh, just a, a talented individual. Um, you know, uh, Louise Napier, I can't say enough about her because she really took me under her wing. And anything that I needed, she was there for me, um, you know, and she was just really wonderful, not only as a, a mentor, mm -hmm. but as, as a friend. And she helped me through a, a lot of, of, of different things that you, you know, you, you encounter as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Asti was there uh, as well as the freshman advisor for me. And, you know, I, I, Larry Coleman. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> um, he was a special individual and really means a lot to me, uh, to my, to my actual family. Uh, I know he meant the world to the Wingate community as well. Sure. He, he was the professor, um, I, obviously a lot of professors were, but that, that person embodied what Wingate University is in, <clears throat> in my mind. So, sorry. No, that's... Larry, uh, man. But, uh, you know, I was in a lot of productions with him and he, he, he really taught me a lot, uh, obviously about communication, because yeah. he was one of my communications professors, but in theater, you know, working together as a group for a common goal, and very in influential in a lot of my decisions throughout college. Uh, Louise was also my advisor. Dr. Little, uh, you know, she was in charge of our trip overseas, which was, uh, was great. You know, you had the, the Winget in London, uh, you had um, the, the Winter National, the Spring Nationals. Yeah. Uh, when I was there, it was Great American Heritage, which was a opportunity for me, being from North Carolina, not really seeing a lot else outside of North Carolina, except maybe Myrtle Beach, <laughs> uh, or maybe a trip to, to Gettysburg. Yeah. That was pretty much the sum of the travel. Great American Heritage was an opportunity to go to New York, to go to New York City, uh, you know, Times Square from little guy from North Carolina who'd never seen any of this stuff. It was overwhelming, to say the least. Very, it was just surreal to me, and Larry, Larry was there, so obviously theater was a big, big focus of, of that, to be able to see shows on Broadway like Cats, uh, to see some smaller shows off, off Broadway, you know, where it was like maybe two or three people mm -hmm. and a sound guy, you know, on a small stage tucked into a back alley. Really incredible. Then you know you have the, the the study abroad program. So I was taking German, uh, which was was offered at Wingate at the time. Uh, the professor there was incredible. When we went to uh, the study abroad program, uh, we took some time off. I was with uh, Amy Honeycutt, now Amy Odom. Uh, she was part of my group, and we had a wonderful time in Germany and the whole semester. But um, you know. Uh, it was great to be able to travel to these, these different yeah. countries and experience um, the, the regional things that uh, these small towns were doing in some of the larger cities and just the, the cultural diversity that was out there. It was just something that I don't think I could have experienced as, as well and as um, thoughtfully as, as I did at Wingate. That's, that's so awesome. Really well, you, you, you took the next question. I'm glad you, you dove into the Winter National and all the travel benefits you know, at the university offer, you certainly took advantage of those. So, awesome answer, by the way, so heartfelt. 
that's that. I mean, you made me almost choke up there. Um, I want to talk about a story you shared with me. A little, a little more lighthearted Perfect. here. Um, beforehand, you have two degrees from Wingate. Yes. yes. So why is that? Which I think is cool. And then tell us about. You have two nicknames. One of them's Russ. We'll get to that in a second. But tell us about the other one and how it ties into the the two degree story. So, <laughs> Wingate College, now Wingate University. When I graduated, I know all the professors were celebrating. Uh, I, I think they had a party uh, when, when they saw me go across the stage because we <laughs> were like, great, Brian Johnson finally got out of here. As I approached the stage, I'm handing my degree and I look at Jerry McGee, and Dr. McGee, and he's like, Mr. Johnson. I look down, showed him my diploma, and he looks down at it, and we smile and shake hands. And my diploma read, Wingate University, Brain Steven Johnson. So they didn't spell check, which is fine. Yeah. So I got another, <laughs> clearly. I got I got a right, <laughs> clearly. Uh, I got another degree printed, but I've got so I've got literally two degrees. Brain Steven Johnson. Because I told Dr. McGee, I said, you're not getting this back. This I'm keeping this. This is right. this is mine. And then eventually I got my uh, Brian Steven Johnson from Wingate University. So awesome. um, you know, and the main the main reason of I stayed is because I just wanted to learn more, man. I wasn't ready to leave Wingate uh, yet. So yeah. uh, the fact that I've got my two degrees hanging side by side in my office at home is I love is, it. Is, is great. Yeah. I love it. Didn't know that story until we got here today, so I'm glad you told me that one beforehand. Yeah. Um, the other thing, so Russ is, yes. is your other nickname. Some folks know you have. So where where does Russ come from? And then the second part to that question is, because I think it might bleed into it. Tell us about the place we're sitting in and, sure. and what this means for you and how it's the next step. So Russ is definitely a nickname I've had for a long time. Um, I've been in this industry both as a server, as a bartender, as a chef, uh, as an owner, and I've been doing it now for 25 plus years. So obviously started off Fridays. When I got to Fridays, they told me that there were five other Bryans that worked there and they all had a nickname. So they asked me what my nickname was, if I had a nickname. I said, well, a lot of my family and friends call me Russ and they said, okay, perfect. So it's stuck. So if you went to some restaurant and bar here in Charlotte, say, I know Brian Johnson, that would go great. Yeah. You go to a place, you say, I know Russ, I'm like, oh, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> right, right. So uh, Russ is a nickname I got from, if you've ever watched uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Sure. Yeah. That is, to me, is one of the quintessential Christmas movies that you, you have, that I have to see every year. The reason that I'm called Russ, obviously my dad would have been Clark, <laughs> but um, you know, growing up, we had so many similarities between that movie and what happened in reality at my house. I'll never forget one year uh, when we, we, we would drive up the mountains, just like they did, you know, we, we'd drive up to West Jefferson, go out to a Christmas tree farm, pick our tree, cut it down, bring it back. Uh, Back then, you know, you're in the cab of a truck, maybe six people were shoved in there. You know, the whole family's going up. Yeah. The tree was too big for the house when we got back one year. And so I'll, I'll never forget my sister uh, was helping me put the tree into the stand. It was wound with, with, with uh, rope. Mm -hmm. So when I cut it, the tree was actually 14 feet versus 10 feet. So I had to cut like, Four feet off the top, it just exploded sap all over the place. Uh, we had flying squirrels uh, in the house, the little sugar gliders. <laughs> so they can't, I guess, because typically you leave the tree outside to let all the needles fall, and then you bring it in. Well, the squirrels were in the tree when I brought it in, so they're flying around one year. Um, we had, uh, my mom wanted a, a, a light a Moravian star hung outside of the house and the even the house is about 20 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. So in a very Clark Griswold fashion, I decided that I want to hang it and I don't want to ever have to take it down. Right. So split level house, she's behind the glass vacuuming as I'm about to put up the star. Mm -hmm. So I started in the very corner of the house, staples, 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 every like two inches. Like this thing is not coming down. The house will fall before this thing will. So as I'm almost up to the top, the ladder I had 
was maxed out at about 15 feet. So I'm, I'm kind of standing there, it's starting to wobble a little bit. And just as I get the last, the last staple in, and mom has turned her back, she's watched me do this, back to me, she's got her back turned to me. The ladder goes, it's gone. So I just grab the scar and it goes, dunk. And I just float back down to the ground like Mary Poppins. Mom stops, she turns her back around, she sees me holding the star, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's all right, I got it. So you have all those different stories that uh, sort of have created this uh, um, nickname for me uh, and it has stuck since, since then. So That's Russ is the nickname. And now we are inside of what will be uh, one of the um, larger bars here uh, in downtown Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So very fortunate to be um, a part of what is called the Public House mm -hmm. Charlotte. So Public House CLT is going to be the name of, of this um, of this establishment. Obviously, we've got a huge copper bar here. Um, a lot of variety when it comes to cocktails and uh, things on draft. Uh, the space itself can hold about 250, 300 people comfortably. Uh, we have a huge private dining room mm -hmm. that can be used for, uh, it'll hold 40 people, yeah. you know? Uh, we can use it for private events or for educational purposes. Like for me, I love to educate, especially my staff, but also uh, customers that wanna learn more about bourbon or more yeah. about wine or more about whatever we can can offer sure so we also have an indoor bocce ball court which is is my favorite part right the place <laughs> uh, we've got a, uh, a dartboard over in the corner we have a small stage uh, that's also tucked into the corner that we can have live music and some bands come in come through also again for educational purposes if we needed to block it off you know if somebody if there was a speaker or something that wanted to come in and speak it's a great great little spot shuffleboard we have a full fun a full functioning kitchen uh, then the patio that's behind us can seat about 70 people comfortably. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. The outdoor space here in Uptown is, yeah. is rare. Yeah, you so, know. you know, and we're sitting right at 300 South Brevard Street. Mm -hmm. So we're just right off of 277. Right. We're across the street from the NASCAR Hall of Fame and the Convention Center. We're attached to the Middle Sea Jazz Club, which has opened up, uh, it opened up in October. Yeah. And we were going to be op opening up in the spring, obviously with the pandemic. Yeah. We had to kind of put that on hold, but we're working with, with uh, the Mill Seat Jazz Club. They're doing live shows uh, Friday and Saturdays. They're doing um, uh, food, drinks, and we're, we're very fortunate to be a part of that. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be working with two, two individuals that are some Charlotte sta staples here in town, Chris Healy mm -hmm. and uh, Delano Little. And so the three of us, uh, are, you know, we're having a good time so far. That's awesome. So far. Well, I'm, I'm excited especially because we have a networking, a alumni networking event here in, in Charlotte every year and I think we found our new home. So, I, so. I, I, so, I look man. forward to seeing a lot of Winget alums uh, <laughs> here very soon. Brian, I can't thank you enough uh, for, for participating in our Absolutely. virtual homecoming and I'm going to get out of the way now so he can get to the main event.